What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the NRN99 Persuader class, aka the Snail Tank. In other videos, we saw how the OG9 and the Hailfire were used to collect debts. If you owed credits to the Commerce Guild, you'd wake up to a towering, mechanized spider laser cutting the roof off of your home. If the Munes recalled your loan, you'd be trying to outrun the Hailfire and its 30 rocket payload. But if you crossed the Corporate Alliance, it was the Snail Tank that you had to worry about. The CA didn't deal too much with personal loans, so they weren't really trying to repossess loaned property, but rather protect their property. Some loved the CA for their ability to civilize remote worlds and bring trade and jobs to these areas, but others had problems with how certain corporations in the Alliance conducted business. Protesters would often block access to these controversial manufacturers, or even destroy property, which is what caused the CA to look to the Techno Union for a solution. They were able to produce a cheap, powerful, and speedy droid unit to bust up the dissenters. Each unit cost the CA only 49,000 credits, that's less than the cost of the disposable TIE Fighter, and even less than the solutions used by the IBC and the Commerce Guild. For that price you got a lot of firepower, with two ion cannons and two heavy repeating blasters, but a modular design allowed it to be swapped out for shock rifles or a series of heavy explosives. I like that with the Hailfire we saw that it had a shock option as well, belying the fact that even in the Outer Rim, you can't just go around killing anything that gets in your way. Or at least not for long. But when you were certain that death and destruction were warranted, you could swap these cannons out for two variable munition launch tubes, capable of firing either 12 concussion missiles, 48 thermal detonators, 4 homing missiles, or 4 dumbfire torpedoes. I think the great variation in weaponry here shows the great variation in the groups that oppose the CA. Some would have just been peaceful protesters getting stunned to regain access to the property, but others would have been dedicated militants. We see some of this with groups like the Nebula Front, a sort of monopoly-busting militia that waged war on the Trade Federation using starfighters, blasters, and bombs. So it is reasonable to think that the CA faced similar folks on the worlds that they operated on. In a way, these droids were battle-hardened by the time that the Clone Wars broke out. When the CA allied itself with the CIS, they donated most of their snail tanks to the war effort, where its design features were able to really shine. The vehicle is essentially a droid brain and munitions wrapped up in a tread system. This main unit here houses everything, with these photoreceptor eye stalks and communications antenna attaching to its droid brain. It actually has a more complex AI than the OG-9 and Hailfire, being able to calculate where to travel and what to destroy in order to accomplish the mission, whereas those other guys just react to things like terrain data while moving along pre-assigned routes. But if any corrections had to be made, the pilot droids located in core ships could always log in and take control of it. This main unit would contain all of the engines that kept everything moving, and the Tabana gas used for its weaponry. By having these pair of side treads out on pylons, it made the tank a lot more stable, but also ensures a good grip when traveling across the debris-filled battlefront. With a height of 6.2 meters, or 20 feet, it was about two-thirds the height of the ACST. And with a length of 10.96 meters, or 36 feet, the snail is about a Jawa longer than an AAT. But despite this size and use of treads instead of repulsors, it still gets up to a great top speed. Standard models have a top speed of 60 km per hour or 37 miles per hour, but some variants can reach 100 km per hour or 62 miles per hour. This made even the base faster than the AAT, and the variant is quicker than even the ATRT. But the way the snail tank combines these traits is kinda terrifying. When this thing was deployed, it would often crash right through buildings to get to its targets. Hitting walls at 60 miles per hour would smash them to pieces, and the incredible grab of those treads meant that it wouldn't even slow down as it accelerated over the resulting rubble. Its eye stalks and a name like Snail Tank might not be that intimidating, but if you understand this thing's ability, you'll think twice about opposing the Corporate Alliance and the CIS. But oppose the Republic did, and over the course of the Clone Wars, they could be seen on various worlds. On Christophsis, they were taken out on the bridge by AV-7 artillery. Later, they were a part of an invasion force on Malastare, and would have their droid brains fried by the Electro-Proton Bomb. Then they were found on Megiddo, and most notably on Kashyyyk. Here they unveiled some cool abilities, but also a crucial weakness. You could see that droid units could ride on the side tracks, and impressively that with fast enough speeds, they could ride on top of the water. Where the DSD-1 Dwarf Spider was crawling up along the seafloor, the larger NR-99 was riding the waves. But the Wookiees were able to blow apart one by attaching a single thermal detonator, 
This housed all that Tabana gas and its droid brain, so this chain reaction instantly turned it into a pile of scrap. After the Clone Wars ended, some Wookiees repurposed hail fires to use against the Empire, but it's unclear if any snail tanks were used this way. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. This thing was set to appear in Episode 2, and there are even animatics that depict it, but they weren't finished in time for the deadline. And there was some confusion as to whether OOM pilots can control it remotely or have to actually sit inside. The Wikipedia and some other sources imply that in Episode 3, an OOM was shown inside of one, but I think that is just a confusion of what's happening in this scene. You can see the OOM seeming to fly out from inside of the tank, but if you go back and just slow it down, you can see the OOM standing on the side. So I think this is who we see getting blown towards the top of the screen. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Additional information comes from the Star Wars Encyclopedia of Starfighters and Other Vehicles, Ultimate Star Wars, and the Complete Visual Dictionary. So that's it for the NRN99 Snail Tank. If you want to connect with us, help support the channel, or get your own copies of the reference material used to make this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, beware the bulldozing snails, and the force will be with you, always.